Someone asked about salamanders in a recent uh, comment, so here they are today for the lizard men. This is actually a replay from a patron practice session I had today. Uh, Spud House, new patron of mine, a big thanks to him. Uh, considers himself a lizardman main, plays a few other factions as well, but um, we practiced quite a few lizardman matchups. Skaven is one that I was curious to try for my own sake uh, with some of the nerfs you know to the cost of skaven slaves uh, to brood whores and so on i wanted to check this one out so here we are but today we're going to be making the highlight about salamanders i infamously called razor dons their armor piercing cousins the best missile cap in the game some time ago which is definitely not true but it is food for thought um and they are very good sort of missile cap i mean 70 uh sorry uh yeah 76 speed on these guys 70 speed rather does make them on the slower end of missile you know mobile missile units but if you look at their model count 24 models with 3100 hp i've got a few rattling guns here currently opening up again 24 models a little bit less hp but you can see the similarities there which is why i've also called them mobile weapons teams um and yeah speaking of rattling guns we've got them bunch of chaff scattered around a council guard in the center single use unit of poison wind globes throt Plague Priest on the uh, uh, Plague Furnace, Assassin, a few Rat Ogres, three Rat Ogres, including the ROR. For Spud House here, he's got four Chameleons, the uh, Pterodons, currently getting lit up by Rattling Guns. He's got uh, Salamanders, some Sora Spears with Shield, Skink Priest, Lord Beast, and just a Red Crest on foot, which this guy, I, I had forgotten about, he does have charge defense against large and decent stats. Not the best weapon strength or armor in the world, very low HP, but very cheap take um, for what he gives you. Um, yeah, the Cold One Riders as well, which could potentially prove to be a little bit of an issue. I don't have the best anti-cavalry tools in this particular build, but uh, let's see. Uh, Salamanders basically versus Razor Dawns, getting back to this discussion. Uh, they're both sort of like, in, in practical usage, they kind of perform like Outriders or, uh, you know... Uh, Dark Riders with repeater crossbows. They're mobile missile units. They don't fire while moving, unlike Outriders, um, and similar to repeater crossbows. Um, they need to get set and get firing, but we've got this line engagement getting underway here. Soros milling in uh, my rattling guns, unfortunately. I left out here on the flank. Uh, they kind of got pulled away by the Pterodons flying away, and now they're getting inundated by Chameleon Skinks, which is not great. We came out here, though. Some wolf rats came out of the woods to uh, collapse some javelin cohorts. We got, uh, yeah, a little bit of an overcommitment of resources here. Rat ogres and throt all coming in to push back these cold one riders, but that does separate them pretty significantly from the rest of this engagement. We do get a little bit of summon action on the way. Plague Furnace is in combat. You can see already Salamander's opening up, doing a little bit of friendly fire. Accuracy is not amazing. Anti-large, though, is very, very good, and uh, overall missile damage, very solid. The Plague Furnace has 100 armor, or sorry, 90 armor, which is pretty solid, but even still, a lot of this damage is going to be getting through. I don't remember the exact proportion on their armor piercing damage, but 26 armor piercing, or sorry, bonus versus large. <laughs> 17 AP on their base missile with a little bit of explosive added in there as well, but just overall pretty high missile damage. And you can see the Plague Priest already taking a beating from those Salamanders, uh, just pulling up in that position. And this is a matchup, too, where, you know, they're not going to face units besides Wolf Rats now, which can catch them in melee, and I guess Brood Horrors, too. But he's still got this uh, Cold One Rider sitting here in screen, just in case I were to have anything else like that. For the most part, though, my mobile threats have uh, largely been dealt with. I mean, I've still got Throt on his Brood Horror coming in. Some Rad Ogres pushing away these units in the back line, trying to secure these Poison Wind Globes here so they can continue firing. Uh, the Summon Manticore comes down to interrupt Throt. And these Rad Ogres as well, I mean, low armor, large targets, are basically ideal for the Salamanders to be going after. The only thing that can make it better is uh, weakness to fire, which Rad Ogres thankfully do not have. But yeah, this... Burn is just getting absolutely roasted, literally burnt to the ground by Salamanders. You can see the, <laughs> the little skink chief on foot here. Popped his opal amulet for that damage resistance. Got a couple pokes there. I actually didn't realize this guy was here for quite some time. My assassin probably could have done a number on him if I had been paying a little bit closer attention. But instead, I'm going after this caster here. I've already used some manticore summons, so you know how... Good as that actually. Speaking of which, we did defeat the Manticore Summon, push that away, but now 
Uh, these Rat Ogres here, Pit Fighters, just getting dragged down by Pterodon Riders. There's still tons of Chameleons here with lots of ammo, forming a nice surround. <laughs> These uh, boys and Globes just in a terrible life situation here. The Assassin eventually does realize, like, hey, this uh, Skink... Red Crested Skink Chief is actually a character I can potentially snipe here, so he's going to go after him. There's a lot of Sora Spears, though, for Anti-Large still against the few Rat Ogres that remain. And, of course, the Salamanders as well used up most of their ammunition shooting at the Plague Furnace, which is obviously the right call. But uh, Council Guard kind of over-pursuing here a little bit as well. This Assassin was doing well initially, but now going to get a little bit surrounded. We've got our Summoned Rat Ogres coming in to bail him out. A nice little rear charge here. Try and help support this engagement. But uh, Sora Spear is definitely not going down without a fight, and all of this uh, ranged for the Lizardmen. Um, I previously have said as well that Skaven are not top 5 shooting faction. That's probably not true. I mean, honestly, thinking about it, they are probably top 5. Lizardmen maybe are just outside the top 5, but there is an argument to be made. You know, if I actually reason it to myself that maybe the Lizardmen are up there. And this particular battle, granted, I didn't take that many shooting tools, so it's not really a fair comparison. But Lizardmen, I mean, this is a full-on 12 ranged unit build, just about. I mean, we can count it up after, but... Lizardmen, I mean, the, almost all of their missiles are poison, right? They have just fantastic ground skirmish units and air skirmish units. Uh, Chameleon Skinks, Pterodons, obviously, both Salamanders and Razordons are fantastic in their own roles as well. Watch as the Salamanders bombard in here, going after Throt. Throt is actually weak to fire damage, so he is possibly even a more ideal target. Rot's newly nerfed melee defense definitely hurting him here. He's got Creature Killer active to give a little bit of extra anti-large, but just eating all of the missiles. Nice, uh, oh man, nice open field blast on these Rat Ogres here. One of the models goes down, and they're going to run for the hills. Thalmanders also probably have the coolest looking missile effect in the game, in my opinion. Possibly. Definitely up there. Guess I would need to do some comparisons to really think about that, but... Yeah. Awesome looking unit as well. Fun, fun stuff. Flock of Doom to finish things out. And with just the Council Guard remaining, I'm going to go ahead and throw in the towel there. So really well done to Spud House. Um, you know, I have had various skill levels of players join my Patreon. And, it, you know, I welcome all skill levels from, you know, like literally only ever played campaign, brand new to Total War. Um, to somebody who, like Spudhouse, has been uh, putting himself re reasonably well in World Championship, as had uh, Noldor, uh, another one of my patrons who came in, was a little bit newer. But anyways, back to Spudhouse. He, I can tell, pretty experienced player. He's definitely got the basics down. Um, yeah, here, yeah, I think this is 12. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I guess 11 ranged units. Um, not quite a full-on 12, right? So, still very, very good, and uh, all of them do get some really nice value. The Chameleon Skinks don't even honestly have to do a lot, but look at the Salamanders here. Almost 2,000 damage value. Think about the cost of the uh, Plague Furnace, even with a relatively light spell loadout, and that uh, starts to make sense. He got some really nice damage on Throt as well, who is very limited here. Um, the Assassin still ends up paying for himself, but yeah, very low damage value on the Plague Priest. Did not really get much value at all from the plague drain and only a couple summons as well uh yeah the chaff it's, it was interesting to see the cost change on skaven slaves probably deserved but at the same time it does definitely change things for skaven like that extra few hundred points that you lose out on uh kind of across the board does hurt when you're choosing your army i definitely noticed that this time around poison wind globes though are definitely still fantastic the mortars i'm not sure i need to test them out still i think they're going to be very very good um, but the Poison Wind Globes definitely now seem like the much more cost-effective option. Uh, they definitely paid for themselves here. The Rat Ogres do okay. Kind of misused them a little bit. Didn't have them high and tight. Uh, kind of running around trying to deal with these Cold One Riders. And still ended up getting compromised. The Wolf Rats too. Definitely complete loss. But uh, for Spud House here, yeah. We've already talked about all of his ranged units. Pretty much Javelins. Very easy to pay for themselves, right? They largely do. Same with the, for the Chameleons here. Alderman Rider is also netting some great value, but really the, t the game was carried by those salamanders. So just to kind of finish up here, uh, coming back to this discussion after quite some time about missile cavalry. And kind of the missile cavalry needs to get set and shooting 
but also kind of including the Skaven weapons teams and other similar type units in that discussion, right? So um, Skaven weapons teams, again, similar model count and HP profile, right? They have different roles depending on whether you get like Jazales or Rattling Gunners or whatever else. Um, yeah, Poison Globes actually have up to 36 models, so they're a little bit different in that front. But in general, um, the fact that uh, Salamanders and Razorons are, are very mobile definitely gives them a pretty big advantage. Salamanders, in terms of their stat profile, a little bit more offensively focused. They do have a slightly higher charge, a little bit more attack, less defense, and a slightly longer range as well, plus a nice arc of fire. Razorons do have an arc, but it's not amazing. Uh, the Razor Dons do have faster missile speed overall, though, which is something to, to consider if you're thinking about having to shoot flying units specifically. Uh, it is much better to have the faster missile speed there, but obviously the fire damage also comes into play in certain matchups. Um, but yeah, bringing it back to Dark Riders with repeated crossbows, though. Dark Riders with repeated crossbows, it's just, it's hard to compare them directly as missile cap because of the differences in speed and HP almost... Yeah, almost 900 less HP overall on Salamanders, and they're more expensive. That is definitely a downside. Uh, they also, you know, heavier armor, but really that lack of HP is very significant, plus the, the difference in speed. Uh, in terms of overall DPS, I would really need to drill down and do some full-on testing against various targets to see. Uh, back in the day, I believe, when I we originally has, had this discussion, I did uh, do some testing. I don't know if I ever published it, but in that testing... Salamanders and Razorons largely trade cost effectively when in a straight shootout with other missile cavalry, um, which does tell me that they're kind of where where you would expect in terms of DPS output. Um, but yeah, the Salamanders. There's not a lot of opportunity, unfortunately. The Fire Slon, it is a fun pick. It's not necessarily a competitive pick, but there is some potential for synergy here on that Kindle Flame. I've done, used it a handful of times, and of course the Salamanders also have a Regiment of Renown with Stock, which in certain matchups like even there against Skaven there's an argument to be made that you definitely want the stock and not only that but perfect vigor as well so if you can keep them from taking too much damage throughout the course of the game once they use up their ammunition they'll still be fresh charging into melee potentially in the late game whereas other units will be very tired that is just a small thing there for the ROR but I, the stock is mainly what you bring them for right but uh, anyway hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this one I was certainly reminded very painfully of the power of Salamanders there, so big thanks to Spudhouse for that, and looking forward to future practice sessions with him. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to check out the Patreon if you are interested. Like the video, subscribe if you found it useful, informative, share it with your friends, all that jazz. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.